Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Thomas Spark and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between small, medium, and large VPNs. Which one should you use? What are the pros and cons for each one of these VPN services? That's what we're going to be checking out in this video. If you guys want to check out all my VPN rankings, find them on vpnterialist.com. And if you do want to help support the channel by checking out some of my other favorite products, stay tuned for this quick little clip and then we'll get back to the video topic. All right, let's go ahead. Now, if you guys wanna get your privacy to a bare minimum online, you should at least be using four products that I recommend here on the channel that I really, really like. You're gonna need a good VPN, and you can find my recommended VPNs on vpntierless.com. Tier one options are the best. Use code TOMSPARK for all those ones, and it should get you some discount. Number two is you're gonna need an anti-doxing tool that deletes your real life information online from data brokers. So if someone does manage to find your, your real life name online, they can't look up your address, your phone number, or any of your family members to harass or even swat you. That's essential. I would recommend a service called Join Delete Me. And if you use code TomSpark, you could get 10% off that. Thirdly, I would recommend a private encrypted email provider instead of using Google that pretty much just logs all your data and sells it off to advertisers. Instead, use a private encrypted email like private mail with code Tom Spark, you could get 50% off that. Super solid service, actually made by the same people who made TorGuard VPN, so you know you can trust it. Also guys, if you're looking for a more private and anonymous way of calling people, texting, signing up for accounts or anything like that where you don't wanna put your real number, I would recommend a service called Hush.com, which has a phone app that you can use to have your own private phone number. And if you use the link down in the description down below, you could get a limited account uh, pretty much lifetime for around 25 bucks with 6,000 text messages or around 1,000 call minutes per year, which is really good deal. All right, guys. So first, let's talk about small VPNs. What are the pros and cons? So guys, in terms of small VPNs, we have stuff like AirVPN, PrivateVPN, OVPN, Cactus VPN. Those are some of the well-known ones that I like here on my channel. Of course, there are smaller VPNs out there that I've reviewed v recently, like Privato VPN, but I would consider that like an ultra small VPN. But small VPNs are VPNs that do have um, user bases, maybe something around 5,000 users to around 15,000 users or around that area. So what are the pros for these VPNs? Well, I think one of the pros is that they do kind of have smaller tight-knit communities, especially with something like AirVPN, you could find the forum community there. Um, some of the people know each other, people are talking, and the community itself has a very kind of tight-knit feel, which some people do like. You know, sometimes picking the underdog, picking a smaller base VPN, you kind of get a better relationship with you know the community and stuff like that which can be a nice for a lot of people another thing is is that a lot of the smaller vpns out there that have been around for a long time um, that are just kind of naturally smaller and have smaller companies are actually more trustworthy a lot of times they don't have tons of investors that can kind of um, mismanage the company they don't sell data they don't attract um, um, attention of spy agencies they don't really attract bad actors either so a lot of times these vpns are pretty good to use for basic privacy and anonymity um, and a lot of these companies have actually joined my rvp which is another cool bonus is that you get some added transparency and i've had some conversations with some of these ceos and they're all really nice people take for example i interviewed david from ovpn since he's a smaller vpn company you know he did have the time to come onto my channel and talk with me and i learned some pretty cool things about his company and you know one good example is that he didn't give up logs to the um about someone using the Pirate Bay or about the Pirate Bay. Um, and he went to core and they didn't have to give away logs, which is pretty cool. So that's a cool thing you could see from a small VPN company. You know, even though they did attract some spotlight, they held ground to their morals and didn't give up any logs, which is really nice. Another one, Cactus VPN, the guys there are really cool. I've talked to them a lot and they are really good people who generally just care about good privacy and want to make a good product that is affordable for everyone around. So that's also really solid, trustworthy VPN that's smaller. I think also a lot of times these smaller VPNs have um, interesting kind of features and um, ideas. Take for example, AirVPN, that is one of the most customizable and feature rich applications out there. It's not necessarily that user friendly, but it has so many settings and customization to play around with. Martin, the CEO of Private VPN, has really interesting ideas with the product, and he's pretty much made it so they own all their servers, which is actually pretty cool. 
and they're not legally responsible for any logs kept or anything like that because he made it into a separate company, which is really nice and a creative way to do things. And I haven't really seen that done before. So a lot of these VPNs that are smaller have really interesting ideas. Um, I think that don't get enough attention. Another pro about these smaller VPNs is that usually they're cheaper and more affordable. Uh, they don't spend as much money on marketing, so they don't have to recoup the cost, and in the end, it's a cheaper product that's more affordable for you. Most of the time, these small VPN services um, don't actually end up paying for reviews, which means you won't see them um, advertised that often or see that many people talking about them. Um, this is kind of a good and a bad thing because the reviews that you find on them will probably contain mostly factual information but tend to skew too strict because they don't really want to promote these products. They usually have lower commissions, um, but the good news is, is that these VPNs aren't shilling out and paying for VPN reviews, so the marketing that these VPNs use is pretty trustworthy. Now, what are the, some of the cons with these small VPN providers? Well, sometimes they are missing the latest features, um, rolling them out quick enough. A lot of times they take their time and do due diligence and add these features when they're ready, but sometimes these VPNs do have smaller development teams and sometimes updates just take a little bit longer. Stuff like WireGuard is still not out for some of these VPNs, although it is coming out soon. Uh, sometimes these VPNs don't have live chat because they don't have the resources to support a 24-7 team. Although some VPNs that are smaller like Cactus VPN actually does have really, really good live chat and great customer support. Other VPNs like Private VPN and OVPN have really good customer support as well. I'm not as active as live chat though, but still really good customer support. Some of these VPNs have a little bit of clunky UIs and kind of look and feel to the applications. Cactus VPN feels a little bit outdated, kind of a weird color scheme, and I think they're fixing some of the UI bugs I noticed in my last review. Private VPN kind of has some outdated features that's still kind of clinging to the application that they need to get rid of. OVPN also kind of looks a little bit out of date as well. They're all pretty functional and work well. They just kind of have this clunky kind of small VPN feel, which some people actually do like, but some people might find off-putting if you're used to more of the polished um, expensive look as some of the other larger VPNs that have more money to devote to the aesthetic feel and UI of the application, which can be very expensive. Some of these smaller VPNs also are missing a little bit of things like mobile applications or compatibility things, fire stick support and stuff like that. Admittedly, some of the larger VPNs also are missing some of these things too, so it's not a huge thing, but it is something I've noticed that some smaller VPNs don't have mobile apps. Stuff like Molvad barely just got one, and I think o OVPN is just also getting an iOS app as well, so that's something to keep in mind. Next, we could talk about um, kind of my favorite type of company for VPN, which would be like a medium-sized company. I would characterize this by having the best benefits of a large company, but also having some characteristics of a small company. This would be a VPN like TorGuard, Viper VPN, and I think even eventually what WeVPN will become. Because WeVPN has a lot of the characteristics I've noticed of a medium company, even though I would say in terms of users, they're actually a smaller company. Now, medium VPN companies have a lot of the pros. Um, of a large company, a VPN company, but less of the cons. I would say that the, the user interfaces of medium-sized VPN companies, stuff like TorGuard and Viper VPN, are more feature-rich and balanced than the smaller VPN companies and generally a little bit more usable. Another thing is, is that more medium-sized VPN companies do tend to have more live chat options and a little bit faster customer support. Viper VPN and TorGuard both have excellent live chat and excellent customer support. Medium-sized VPN companies, TorGuard, Viper VPN, and WeVPN all have some of the newest features like WireGuard and they've been supporting it for some time. That said, um, Viper VPN is missing a couple things here and there, so it's not always perfect. Medium-sized VPNs like TorGuard, Viper VPN, and WeVPN usually tend to work a little bit better with streaming, and in some cases are the best VPNs to use for streaming because these VPNs are getting less attention from Netflix and a lot of the IPs aren't getting blocked as often. So in my opinion, these ones are actually the best to use for streaming. WeVPN is probably my favorite VPN to use for streaming right now really good supports over like 150 different content libraries 30 different netflix regions very solid if you're looking for a streaming vpn i would go for we vpn right now use code tom spark um, yearly deal is only 40 bucks two-year deal is like 70 dollars or something like that so really solid medium vpns also have pretty good working applications that look better and just work better overall and don't really have that same kind of jank factor as some of the smaller vpns now what are the cons in terms of median medium VPN providers, well, they're still a smaller company, so they can't often afford things like huge public audits or 
these kind of things that a lot of people are looking for um, that larger VPNs advertise. You know, a lot of people are saying, hey, you know, why should I use TorGuard or something like that if it doesn't have a public audit recently? Um, it, these things are expensive, but it doesn't necessarily mean the VPN itself isn't trustworthy because most of these smaller VPNs, medium sized VPNs do have in-house teams doing audits and stuff like that on their own. And I think since they are smaller companies, they're often less um, targeted for hacks as well as targeted by spy agencies. So in some instances, they are actually still very, very secure. One other con about the medium sized VPNs is that they're usually reviewed pretty harshly and Often the v reviews you find on them will actually be kind of confusing and spreading misinformation. I see this all the time with stuff like TorGuard. People will mischaracterize the application and say the UI doesn't scale properly even though they didn't see a setting to click to make it scale properly. They will say it's hard to use even though it's not hard to use. They will even get some things wrong like saying that it's based off you know, copying Tor, um, the Tor network, it, they're take, it's taking its name, when in fact it's really just Tor for Torrent Guard. So there are a lot of misconceptions that people make because they don't really want you to buy it because it only has 30% commission rates. And that's what I mean with these smaller VPN companies, they usually have smaller commission rates and they're not paying for any reviews. So just like smaller VPNs, um, medium sized VPNs will often re be reviewed too harshly uh, because people don't really want you to buy them. The good news is, is that um, these companies aren't really paying for reviews. And when you find someone like my channel who like these products, you could be sure the review is honest because the reviews aren't being paid for. Lastly, we could talk about the large VPNs and what are some of the pros and cons with large VPNs? This could be stuff like NordVPN, Surfshark, IPVanish, um, and ExpressVPN. Now these services, um, they do have some pros, um, namely the UI and look and feel of these services is usually spot on, very polished, and they look and feel kind of like a premium VPN service. The UIs are a little bit smoother and developed more carefully and the aesthetic is really nice, um, usually because they spend more money on those kind of things. That said, these companies also do have bigger budgets and they spend a lot of their money on marketing. So most reviews you find about these products, you can't really trust them because most of the time they are advertisements. And if someone is reviewing a large VPN provider, chances are it's gonna review it as positive as possible and not talk about any of the downsides because they want you to buy the product because it has amazing commissions. Take for example, some of these larger VPNs often get kind of glossed over some of the faults of them like ExpressVPN, it doesn't have a SOX5 proxy, but a lot of reviews don't mention that. Another VPN that I would consider getting a little bit larger would be something, another thing would be something like ProtonVPN, which I consider a larger VPN nowadays. The fact that it doesn't have extensions or NordVPN, for example, it doesn't even have dark mode on PC for some reason. And my eyes always get blinded whenever I use it. A good thing about large VPN companies for some people is that usually they're not based in the US. Usually they're using expensive lawyers and expensive ways to make shell corporations. So that way they're not legally accountable for anything that happens with the VPN company. This can be a good or bad thing depending on your perspective. It could be a good thing if you are worried about some spy agency coming after your VPN or something like that perhaps. You're thinking that being in an offshore location will provide them some legal protection. Although if a spy agency wants to get your data and your VPN is based somewhere, I don't think that's gonna help much. But for some people that makes them feel better and helps them sleep better at night for some reason. However, the con is that since they're in a weird location and they have all these complicated legal setups, a lot of times if you don't like the service or you wanna sue them or something's going on shady with the company, they are gonna have more protection against you as well. Um, so that's also something to consider. It's also harder a lot of times to find the owners of these large companies um, because they are kind of behind all these legal jurisdictions and legal companies. Although some companies um, like Surfshark are getting a little bit more transparent, listing out the company owners on the website, which I do like. But still, that has been a long time coming and something I've been complaining about for years is that a lot of these large corporations don't provide enough information about the owners. And some of the VPNs themselves, like ExpressVPN, still don't put the owners on their website. Um, although they have shared it in like articles on TechRadar, but still not good enough in my opinion. Another con with these large VPNs is that a lot of times they oversell and kind of overmarket their products. Um, really making a lot of ads, trying to convince you to use VPN for every single reason in the world, when in fact not everyone needs a VPN. Um, you know, 
they will say stuff like, oh, if you go to a coffee shop, you might as well kiss your data goodbye and stuff like that. When in a lot of cases, that's not true. Um, that's not to say VPNs aren't needed for a lot of people, whether you want to torn, unblock geo restrictions, protect your internet privacy from your ISP. But a lot of times these large VPNs have insane marketing campaigns. You'll see them all over YouTube. It does get annoying. And it, a lot of times people will be kind of buying VPN even when they don't need it just because they saw their favorite YouTuber talk about it. That does kind of rub people the wrong way sometimes. One of my final thoughts to end out this video is one of my favorite things about small VPN companies um, compared to um, large VPN companies, I would say the same about medium companies as well, is that small and medium companies in terms of VPN are much more receptive to feedback and changes. I've reached out to a lot of large companies out there and most of them are not very receptive to pricing changes or any other kind of changes to their product because they're huge companies and it would just take too long and lots of times they can't even figure out how to implement my feedback into the actual product where smaller and medium sized companies are much more effective at responding to feedback and addressing feedback and they just aren't as bogged down by chair boards, chairmen, or whatever chair people are sitting in the chairs that make things never happen. Anyways, guys, so those are some of my thoughts about the differences between small, medium, and large VPN providers. I think my perfect sweet spot is medium VPN providers going into the smaller range. You'll see a lot of my tier one options are medium slash small VPN providers, stuff like TorGuard and Viper and WeVPN are all kind of medium to small VPN providers, stuff like private VPN, OVPN, as well as Cactus VPN are also highly rated on the channel as well because they're small, trustworthy companies that you can trust, that are affordable, and they have most of the features you need, especially some of the ones like TorGuard and WeVPN. Anyways guys, those are some of my thoughts. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. Would you use a large, medium, or small VPN provider, and what are your reasons for doing so? Thanks for checking out this one guys, and I'll see you again very soon.